Alright folks, so we're going to try to do a lathe video uh, where I'm going to show you the basic drilling of a stem and, and the forming of the uh, tenon of the stem. Now, it's a cold day here and I know my furnace is going to come on, but I'm also going to be running the lathe, which is going to be very noisy, so I'm just going to push through. I apologize for the background noise, but uh, the best way to do this is just going to be to push through. So, we are going to uh, take this small uh, piece of acrylic, which is going to be our stem, um, and mount it in the three-jaw chuck. Yeah, if I can find the right key, here we go. And we're going to face off both ends of this, so we're sure that both ends are nice and flat. On the length. So, so far, um, working with acrylic, what I found is that somewhere around 250 to 300 RPM is, is um, pretty reasonable. You don't want to go too fast with acrylic because it does melt. I know, you know, I, I'm not a machinist. I'm taking light passes just because I feel safe doing it. That end is now nice and flat and perpendicular relative to the axis of rotation. Now we will turn it around. We can use that flat end to register it up against the back of the chuck. And we will do the same on this end. steps because the um, the final diameter of the of the air hole at this end which is going to be the tenon end is quite large and, and we don't want to drill that large all the way through plus we need to make pilot holes and so on so I'm going to start with um, what's called a center drill which is the little stubby sharp point that'll get things started, make a little dimple there for the um, other drill bits to, to fall into. Don't like the way that jumped. Weren't quite seated properly. Go, 
So the idea is that, that, was, that that's a short enough drill bit that you minimize vibration and it's a stubby enough or thick enough bit that it uh, will stay on center. And now we can follow that with a pilot bit. And this is uh, something close to eighth inch. And as I'm doing this, it, it is important to lubricate the cut. I mean, even though this is a plastic, not a metal, um, it does require some lubrication. And what I'm using is actually um, dishwashing detergent that's cut 50% with water. So it's you know, a very safe thing to put on a pipe mouthpiece. I, I will rinse the mouthpiece when I'm done with, uh, with just water, so that'll all be washed away. And it's important to do this in steps because the uh, if you don't, the chips will kind of clog up in there and, and will wind up melting. And you can actually wind up seizing the bit in the acrylic, which will break the bit and ruin the blank. Don't ask me how I know that. I know if you see videos of other guys doing this, they just kind of slide the um, the tailstock in and don't worry about the hand crank. I'm not yet that uh, skilled with the lathe that I'm comfortable just kind of ramming it in there. So in general, I tend to be a bit slow, but it works for me. Okay, so that's our pilot hole started. I've, I've gone in about an inch at that uh, 1 8 inch. And now the, uh, the next step is going to be to drill all the way through. And to do that, uh, hopefully you can see this, I'm using this bit which is tapered. So the end is, is very narrow and uh, it widens out to something just slightly above an eighth of an inch. Uh, maybe 3 16 down there. I haven't measured it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is mark the bit so I know where to stop. And we'll set it into the chuck so that it's just slightly proud of that point. And now more drilling. chips off the bit. You'll notice I'm dialing it in, but then I'm just pulling it out. And the reason I'm doing that is that um, I want to get it out of the draft hole quickly before it starts to melt or anything. Before the chips melt and sort of get stuck on the inner wall. We're getting there. All right, now, so we have the hole drilled all the way through. And the next step is to begin to form the tenon. Now the tenon is um, 
for this particular pipe um, is actually three eighths long. Uh, although there's going to be an eighth inch spacer built in, so I'm going to mark off a half inch. Actually, it's probably not the best pin to do it with. I'm going to mark off a half inch, and we can always trim this a bit, so it's not absolutely critical. And then I will bring the turning tool back in. I'm actually going to keep rolling. Probably cut out somewhere in the middle here just to save time because it's going to be rather repetitive. For I think I should say in terms of safety, um, I know that my technique in reaching in there and removing the, the chips is terrible. Um, if this was a metal that I was turning, I would never do that. can be quite dangerous. I am wearing safety glasses, short sleeves, trying to be a good guy. The calipers are set to just slightly over what I need. So when they fall down, I'll know that it's time to start taking light cuts. Very close. By fall down, I mean when they actually slip over. shank here. Well, that's actually pretty close. But I stopped when I did. Um, let me take one more very light cut.
very light cut, three more very light cuts. You get the idea. Okay, that's good. So now we're going to polish that up. And to do that, we're just going to go through ascending grits of the, uh, the micro mesh pads. fit yeah perfect so you can see there's room there for a spacer and actually maybe a bit extra but I can always trim off the end so this is spacer excuse me, <coughs> oh, excuse me. so the spacer is uh, made out of a piece of uh, ivory acrylic and I've already cut this uh, on the lathe you know made sure to face off the one side so that it'll fit flush and that'll go on there just like that so the next step is going to be to epoxy that into place uh, and then once that epoxy sets I can come back and, and finish up the sort of trim and, and fit, fit. Uh, and then we'll be done. Okay so we've epoxied that ring in place and the next step is going to be to, uh, to trim it a little bit just to uh, make sure that when it sits in the mortise it's sitting flush. Just about where I want it to be. And I'm going to try to come in and just kiss that uh, that shoulder.
and it's sitting about right, but the shape, the, this is just a little bit longer than I think it's intended to be. Let's see. Yes, it's about a sixteenth off. So we will bring that down by just about a sixteenth. fit with the shank. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the last thing we're going to want to do is take that um, stem down so that it's sitting flush with the shank. And to do that we will just move in here. Obviously we're not going to be able to do the whole stem because we got the chuck in the way, but that's okay. We can get at least the initial segment done and that'll give us a guide when we go on to shape the rest. I'm not actually going to be touching the wood at all. Kind of sneaking in there to take some light passes. This, of course, is a, is a shank for a cob mod. If this were a pipe that was being restored and needed a new stem, it wouldn't be possible to put the stummel on there and have it spinning like this. So in that case, we would have to just sort of sneak up on the final dimension and do plenty of testing back and forth to make sure that we don't uh, go too far. So next, the last thing we're going to do is polish this up, run through some grits, starting at two twenty. And I, I know that I hit that Delrin when I was bringing this down, so I'll just polish up the whole thing. That's two twenty. 320 400 600 
600. But again, since I had a touch of that dough in a little bit, I will reapply this. All right, now we'll just uh, go ahead and polish up with the micro mesh. segment of the stem, the, the part right in here, is actually going to be polished again when we buff, but this is going to be the, the final shaping for that section. The rest of the blank will obviously have to shape to form the uh, mouthpiece and button. a nice smooth fit. Don't feel much of a ridge around that. It's very good. Okay, we'll move this. Set the shank aside and now the absolute last thing we have to do here is let's see I've got to switch back to my my chuck here. I know this is out of shot, but I have to. Um, I have to actually switch back to the Jacobs check, which I took off in order to have a um, an open-ended ended ended an open-ended center that I could use to clamp this uh, white disc in place while the epoxy was curing. And now I'm putting the Jacob's Chuck back in so that I can install a countersink. there is to it now. Um, from here on out obviously we have to shape the the rest of the stem, the mouthpiece, the button, all of that, and widen out the air hole. But uh, you can see we've got a, a nice fit to the shank. The tenon fits well inside the Doran mortise and uh, it's, it's, it's nice and smooth transition on the sides here. So we are all set. This is ready to be attached to the rest of the cob and have the stem shaped. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that's all I'm going to do in this video. I really just wanted to show you the lathe work, the uh, drilling, and the uh, forming of the tenon and, and how that works. 
So if you've got any questions or comments, please uh, feel free to leave them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. That uh, really does help. And other than that, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.